So welcome back to this tutorial series where we want to go on with this game right here. You see, we can shoot, we have some nice art, score, life count, ammo count, so it's almost done. So this is the last part of the series and today we want to give the whole game more juice, you know. We make screen shake, particle systems, sounds, sounds are pretty important, some music, but time is rare. So let's get started. 1909 games. Let's make games. So the first thing we want to do is adding the cinema machine because we will use it. Go to Window, Package Manager and search for the cinema machine. And here we go. Here is the cinema machine and we want to install it. It could take a while and while you're waiting, always a good idea is a coffee, you know? Okay, this one is too hot, sorry. That's the most painful thing if the coffee is still too hot to drink, you know? And I, I don't put milk into my coffee, so you don't care. Okay, I get it. So, and we are here in the package manager. So let's go to our assets and I will import some sound and music. Um, and if you don't have assets with music, there are some free music packs and sound packs, or you can go to other websites, get some sounds and music. It doesn't really matter. So let's take this Woodland music pack. I think it was for free. Okay, and import it. I don't know which song exactly and since it is not too big, let's just import everything and we will see what we will use. Okay, it's imported and we need not just music, but some sounds. So let's search for sounds. Let's take this casual sounds. Uh, to be honest, I I uh, have not tested it. Um, so I don't know if the sounds are the right ones for our game right here, but we will just take them because it is a tutorial, you know. Um, it's not about finding the right sounds, it's about implementing the sounds in your game. So, that's it. That's it. And now here we are back in our project. And the first thing we want to do is in our cinema machine right here. So we install the cinema machine and now we have this window. And we want to create a virtual camera. So, now we have this CMV Cam 1. <laughs> in the inspector we have a great thing right here that's called noise. And let's add a basic multi-channel Perlin. It's basically this noise profile. Let's set it to 6D shake. Okay, as you see right here, it's pretty shaky. <laughs> Maybe a little bit too much. So and what you see right here, we are not in the right place. So we see nothing. So let's reset our position. I thought we would have done this before, but we haven't. So, okay, let's go with something like this and something like that. So, beautiful. And now let's see what the multi-channel pollen noise is doing. Okay, that's maybe, just, just maybe it's a little bit too much, okay? I think for a camera shake, when we shoot or something, oh, maybe that's too much. Okay, so you can play around with the values right here. That's way too much. Let's see. That's way better. And now we need a script for our um, virtual camera right here. And let's call it screen shake. When it is loaded, then open it up. As always, let's delete everything by default. Say so using. And now we use the cinema machine. So the first thing we want to get is our cinema machine. So let's type in. Okay, so we have now our private cinema machine virtual camera and that is called cinema machine. And we want to apply that. So let's go to our public void awake. So here we get our cinema machine virtual camera. And we need some time value, so how long the screen shake will be applied to the camera. For that we need a float. We call it a shake timer. Now we want to make a function that calls the shake. So let's call it a shake camera. I mean it must be public because we need access from other scripts to this um, function. Okay, that's a long line right here. So 
We say that the uh, uh, cinema basic multi channel Berlin um, will be the uh, so we get the component of the cinema basic multi channel Perlin in this case and that's all we do in this line so go to the next line and now we say and now we want to set the intensity and the time so we set the amplitude gain to the intensity what we see right here and the shake timer will be the time and we want to set all of that to an instance so we can easily access it this double i don't know why i type in double uh, to or two types amplitude gain i don't know <laughs> And now we want in our private update to check if the timer is more than zero. And if it is like this, then we say, then we say shake timer minus equals time dot delta time. So we are counting. We want to set the amplitude, so the intensity of the camera shake to zero again, because then we want to stop <laughs> shaking the camera, right? So. So what we do then is, let's see. The shake timer is minus equal, so an if then, so let's make a little bit more space between them to see better. And then it is checking if the shake timer is less or equal to zero. And if it is like this, then the, um, let's see right here, then the we get the component Cinemachine Basic Multi-Channel Perlin, so our camera shake. And we want to set this, the amplitude of this one to zero. And we can access all of this because we typed in using Cinemachine. I think that's it for this script, uh, if I haven't forgotten something. So let's save it. Let's set our amplitude gain to zero because we are setting it in the script. So now nothing should happen, right? Okay, beautiful. And it will never shake because we never call the function to shake this camera, you know, to shake it, shake it. And now the coffee is cold enough to drink. So that's the most important thing. Ah, better, right? So now let's go in our enemy script. We go to project, prefab, and we have our enemy right here, and the script. And we want to shake the camera if the enemy gets hit. So let's see, where do we have it? Private void here on trigger. Perfect. When we hit the bullet, then we want to shake the camera. So let's add the camera shake. So we should say screen shake. So the name that we have for our screen shake script right here, dot instance. So now it's pretty easy to call it, dot shake camera. And now we can set the amplitude and the timer. Right here inside of this, we can say 5F and 1F. And I will show you in a moment. Just give me a moment. Okay, let's save it. Now as camera shake, we see Right here, float, so the first float will be the intensity, so the amplitude gain, and the second float will be the timer. So what we say is we have an amplitude of five and a timer of one. So the camera shake will be there for one second. And the same we want to have right here. So let's just copy and paste this one. So if we collide with the player or the enemy destroyer, the same should happen. Let's see if everything is working just fine. So let's see. Mm, okay, we have an error. Let's see what what the problem is right here. Oh, of course. And we are missing in our public void a wait. We need to set the instant to this. So I forgot this. It equals this. And now it should work. So let's go back to our Unity project and play the game. And let's see what will happen. Okay. The <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit too much and a little bit too long. <laughs> So one second is maybe too long. So let's go to our enemy. And as you remember, so this is the amplitude. So let's set it to just one and the timer to uh, 0.5. I think half of the time is more than enough. <laughs> maybe it's even too much right now, but we will see. So let's test it. Yeah. 
that's way better, but still too much. So we want just a little bit of screen shake. Don't overdo this, really don't overdo this. So let's set 0 0.2 and here we say 0 0.2 as well. Let's test it again. And like this, you you just should test what, what is good for you. Okay. So let's go and play the game again. Oh yeah, that, that's good, right? So now we have it. And it's the same we want to do with the player, but for the movement. So let's go to our player script, open it. We can just copy and paste it. And that's a great thing about it. You can just copy and paste it and it will just work out of the box. And that's so great with this instance. Okay, so when we press W, it should, you know, just have a little bit of impact. So let's make it a little bit less and a little bit shorter. The same is with the key code S. So if you go up or down, it will have a little bit of camera shake. And here in the fire rate, doo -doo, let's go and say, there we have a little bit more of camera shake, but the same timer. Okay, so now when we move or shoot, the camera should shake quite a bit. So let's test it. Oh yeah, that's great. And now we have, maybe that's too much, okay? That's quite annoying at the moment. <laughs> you know, it's too much. Um, but for this tutorial, let's let keep it like this, but you can go down with the amplitude or the timer or, you know, whatever you want. Just don't overdo stuff. So that's it for the camera shake. It adds so much to the game and you can, you can do so when you shoot, when you know you can use it everywhere, but don't make too much of camera shake because you don't want the player to feel bad, you know? And you will feel bad if everything is shaking all the time. Maybe your game needs a lot of camera shake because that's the main selling point, but in most cases, a little bit of camera shake is enough. And as you see, I have really short shakes and really not that much and it is still too much. So, okay, let's go on. Next thing is music. Let's add some music. In our scene, in our level scene, let's create an empty object and let's call it music. And we will keep it pretty simple. Um, let's just add a audio source. Okay, that sounds great. Let's test it in the game if it is fitting to the style, you know. Oh yeah, I think that that's pretty great for the style I'm going here. Great, beautiful. Okay, let's keep it like this. That was easy, right? And we want a different song for the menu. So just let's make another object. Okay, looks nice. Uh, you could play around a lot more with the sounds, you know, and with the music to see if it really fits your style. Yeah, great, that's it. So we have music. Uh, let's set it to a loop. And that's really, if you have a bigger game, you could not just do it that simple. But you know what? In this case, it's really enough. So let's, oh, uh, let's rename it. Okay. So it's called music. Okay, music is done. <laughs> but we need a lot of sounds because it feels kind of empty. So two things left to do, sounds and particles. When do we want to have sounds? When the player is shooting or when the player is moving. And for that, let's see. We have casual music sound pack. Uh, we have coins. I think coins is not the right thing. I think we need a pop sound. So let's go to pops. <laughs> Okay, I'm not happy with that sound pack, so let's... Uh, so I'm happy with the sound pack, don't get me wrong, but I... Not for this project. Let's so, so let's search for some other sounds. I have quite some sound packs, so that should not be too big of a problem. Let's go with the big pack, you know, ultimate. I know it's a big pack and that will take some time to import, so I will drink some coffee and we see each other in just a moment. Oh, and here we go, we could import everything. So here we go, 40 minutes later. <laughs> this is a really huge uh, pack. We finally have imported everything. So let's see what we want to use for this. Bullet impact, maybe bullet impact on mud. Mud is good, right? 
Yeah, that, that could be something. Okay, so let's go with uh, the bullet impact mud. So let's say mud one, two, uh, eight. Okay, so let's go to our player. Player has our little script and we need to, and we have all our variables right here, but we are missing sounds. So let's go with an audio source, public audio source. So, and here we have our public audio source, so we need that to play the sound. And we have two clips, one for shooting and one for moving. And the moving, of course, should happen right here when we press W or S. And we want a random pitch, so that is not sounding all the time exactly the same, okay? So, it's you will hear what I mean, so it's a little bit the pitch is higher or lower. Okay, so we say our player audio, so the audio source, should have a pitch that is in a random range of 0.6 and 0.9. So that will happen when we press W, so it will change in this moment. And then we want to play the sound. So we say player audio equals, so we play one shot and that is called uh, or that is our move audio clip and we will define it later and that is um, one so, so the volume is one and the same we want to do so both of this we will copy them and paste them when we press S so like this we can go back to unity and let's wait until unity is ready and so we have here we have it so we have the player audio so let's Make it audio source. And we need a player audio is this audio source. A shoot audio clip. Yeah. Oh man. See here we go. Mud. No, that's not good. So mud mud five was. Yeah, that's that's good for shooting. And for moving, let's say. We I think we could use some mud. Maybe that's too much. Let's go with this slightly. Th that's not so loud, you know? Okay, so let's test. So it will nothing uh, will play no sound when we shoot. So you hear when we move, we have a sound. That's great. And now we need a sound when we shoot. So let's copy and paste this two lines again. And let's add it to our fire rate enumerator. So, and we want the not the move audio but the shoot the shoot audio clip so that's everything we need to do for the player but at first let's test it because maybe it's, it's not working why am i <laughs> it, yeah it is working yeah beautiful Th that's it so easy right and we need to do something similar for the enemy but for that let's create an empty uh, game object and call it enemy audio enemy and we have an audio source as well and this game object will have a script so we call it enemy sounds do the same like all the time and we want to say or we need an audio source that will be public We have this die audio clip and I'm not sure if we should have a different one so if the enemy is not get shot by the player but is you know killed by the enemy killer you know that is um, destroying or the enemy destroyer that is destroying the enemy if it is out of the screen maybe we have a different sound for that. So let's call it destroyer enemy clip. And let's assign the audio source to our audio source right here. So in the awake function. Okay, that's it. And now we need two functions to play our different sounds. 
And they must be public because we need to call them from other script. And we do the same that we have done in our player script. Player script, there we go. We have, so this two lines with the, uh, where we set the pitch and where we play a one shot. Let's copy them and paste them here. And we need to uh, rename this player audio to our audio source. So we can copy and paste this, it's a little bit faster. So that's it, copy and paste this one again. Say play destroy sound. I mean, basically it's kind of the same dead or destroy, but like this we know when we get destroyed by the destroyer and when we get destroyed by the bullet. So this part is when we get hit or when the enemy is get hit by a bullet and this part is when he get hit by the destroyer. So let's go and change the one shot clip. Destroy enemy clip. Okay, beautiful. That's it. Nothing more to do right here. Now we should go to our enemy script and make the sound happen. So in our private awake function, we want to get our audio enemy. Oh, let's see if we really called it audio enemy. Um, audio enemy. Okay, let's go in here. So that's it. Okay, beautiful. So in here we want to get our script enemy sound. Okay. So enemy. Let's save the whole thing and go back and see if we have an error. Okay, there is an error. Of course, there is an error. There's every time an error. <laughs> Audio enemy is not enemy sound. Sound. Enemy sound. Oh, so now we have it. So enemy sound. So this script right here is audio enemy. And here we say audio enemy equals game object dot find audio enemy. And we get the component enemy sound. So that's the script. Beautiful. And now we should be able to just play, play the sound. So when we collide with the bullet, then we should play the sound. So audio enemy. And what, how have you called it? So play that sound. So let's copy this one and go back in the enemy, play that sound. Okay, let's copy and paste it for the other collider. And in this case, we want to play the destroy sound. So let's copy, play destroy sound, play destroy sound, paste it right here. And here we go. And let's see if it is working as it should work. No, it is not. Why is it not playing the sound? Okay, let's search for... Oh, we haven't... Yeah, of course. We need to assign a audio clip. Ah, oh, where do we go? Where do we go? And here we go with the audio enemy and we have no sound. So the audio source should be the audio source, of course. The die audio. Let's search for some... 100. Not for 100. <laughs> um, we have some blood X. Oh, that, that sounds pretty bad. And the destroy enemy should be even more bloody. So let's go with that. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, it's slightly different sounds for both scenarios. So now let's go. <laughs> okay, beautiful. That's awesome. Um, but I think uh, we should go to the enemy script and when we go here, okay, so we have this set to five. So um, this is the amplitude, so let's, I for, have forgotten to change this to the same like when we hit the bullet, so let's save it. Okay, and now it feels so much better, right? Sound adds so much to a game that's unbelievable. So the game is way too easy, but you can make it harder if you want to, of course. And let's test what will happen 
Yeah. Beautiful. Then we have this restart or menu button. I really don't like the screen, but you can make it as you want to, you know, so you don't have to make it. Like I have done it, so... Okay, so we here we go with the main menu and we can go back. Everything is working. Just one little thing and that will be a particle system when the enemy will die. So, we should make a new effect that will be a particle system. Okay, let's call it enemy die particle. Okay, in the renderer we should have a slightly different material. Oh, at first let's reset the position. Um, then we go with a new material. Okay, at first let's make a new material, create a material. Where do we go? Here we have a material. So it's called die particle. Let's make a particle, a standard unlit particle. And we want to have our particle that we have done before. And we have uh, here no cutout, make fade. It looks way better. Okay, so, and let's go back to our particle system and assign this die particle right here. Okay, you can zoom in. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, and next we should have a different color. So let's set the start color between two colors. Um, so it should be something like a really bright red and a not that bright red. <laughs> Maybe a little bit like this, something like that. Okay, something like this should look pretty okay. And the emission will be red over time. Let's do, let's put it to zero. So you see there are no particles, but now let's add a burst with a count of 200. I don't know, let's just test it. And the shape will be a cone. Okay, no, that's not what, I, what we want. Or you know what, maybe we want it, but we want to rotate it. 90 degrees to the camera. Okay, let's go back to our 2D view. And here you see the particles. And let's make the start size a little bit uh, between two constants. So it is one and let's say five. Okay, that's maybe a little bit too much. So the start lifetime should be not more than half a second, I guess. Yeah, that's more than enough. And the spa start speed should be, let's double it. Let's make the count to 20, that's maybe enough. Yeah, that's great. And we want a size over lifetime. So let's go with size over lifetime. And let's change it so the size will decrease. So you see that? Looks kind of okay, right? Okay, so this particle system will be a prefab. And we will instantiate this one. Okay, let's delete it. And we want to instantiate it on the position where the enemy dies when the enemy dies. So in our enemy script, we need one more variable that will be a public game object. Let's call it die particle. And we want to call it right here when the, oh no, right. we want to call it right here and right here. So let's go with the bullet screen shake. Okay, and then we want to instantiate a particle system. So. Okay, so we want to instantiate a particle, uh, so a particle system at our transform.position, so at wherever we are at the moment, or the enemy is. So wherever the enemy is, there will be the particle system and with no rotation. Okay, so let's copy and paste it. And one thing left to do is that we need one more script for the particle system, so let's open up the particle system and add a component or destroy self. So let's make a new script, create and add this one. Here we go, open it up. And what we want to do here is that the particle system will destroy itself after one second. Because if we don't do it, there will be a lot of particle systems in the scene and we don't need them. And when there's a burst and 10 seconds after, there's another burst in the same position and we don't need this second burst, so it's, it's, we don't need it. And that script will be pretty simple. So at first we need to float to set the time when we want the particle system to destroy itself. And let's set it to one. When the particle system will start, so when it will be created, it should directly start with the coroutine 
that counts so that we have after two seconds or after one second in this case that we then destroy the game object. Okay, so we will start the coroutine just in the beginning. We need an I enumerator and that will be called destroy self because we have called it right here destroy self. And here we want to tell the object to destroy itself after one second. So the first thing is we need to make a yield return and that will be with the value of destroy timer. And after that, when this is done, so after one second, it will destroy itself. So we say uh, yield return, you wait for seconds. So it will wait for one second because we said destroy timer to one and then we will destroy the object. Okay, beautiful. And like this, we should not have any problems with a lot of particle systems in the scene. So let's go to our enemy. Here we go. Die particle will be this one. And maybe it will be too big or too small, so the particle system, but we will see. Oh, well, looks not the best, but you know, it is doing the job. So beautiful, there we have it, our little game. So from this point you can make the game bigger or you can bring in some levels or whatever you want, but this is a basic game and that's the end of this series. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you could learn a little bit and of course I hope you will subscribe to the channel to see more like that because I want to make a platformer tutorial series and a lot of more. I have so much ideas in mind. I don't know what it will be next, but there will be something cool next. So don't forget to like the video and leave a comment. And that's it. I hope I see you next time. Bye.